Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray the Spirit to think and to do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring. And so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 33, and we will read in unison. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the people in the world. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance, 
for all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait upon his love, to pluck their lives from death and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him, for in his holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as we put our trust in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going, By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a strange, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith, without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country. That is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do, that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near, nor no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action, and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Looking at the world as I do, I am put in mind of a poem that I had to go back and read again. You'll know why in a moment. Robert Frost. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Serums like the world's on fire. You read the news, certainly it is literally on fire in places, unless, of course, it is drowning. Both cataclysms are on our minds when we read the news, and those scenes of utter destination are tough. And the loss of life, and the loss of livelihood, and the loss of place, it's hard to look away. So on the good side, we hear tales of people who are arriving to rescue and pick up the pieces to come alongside those who lose everything. As is often the case, the poor seem to be the ones who get hit the hardest. Those who live at the edges with not a lot of resource to fall back on or jobs that don't pay well enough for them to have insurance. Or as we say in the Deep South, insurance. There's a little bit to this that's dark, too, though, that we watch and witness the carnage and see that it's not happening. It's sort of like rubbernecking when you drive by a wreck on the road to see what happened. There's some piece of us that still, deep down, I'll admit, we need to admit, that really couldn't happen to us. It makes us feel a little safer, or at least we feel like we have insurance or insurance. I love that scene in the movie Fried Green Tomatoes where the main character, Evelyn, who's this middle-aged woman, is struggling through life, trying to lose weight and take over loss of her marriage and, and all the things that's going on and stop being such a doormat for other people. And there's this great scene where she's in a parking lot and she's about to pull into a parking space that she's waited for and this little sports car park drives right in ahead of her and the two flashy girls with big hair, because it's back in the 80s, uh, get out and say, face it, lady, we're younger and faster. She backs up, floors it. 
destroying their car <laughs> and pulling away in a cathartic moment we can all love. And they come out screaming, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? And she said, face it, ladies, I'm older and I've got more insurance. <laughs> nobody says that nobody, you know, the, we don't see that played out where Evelyn pays a big old deductible and her rates get jacked up because that's not a good story. But we do like to think we have insurance. God says to Abram, do not be afraid. And he promises that he'll have an heir even in his old age, even the, the language is funny, it says. And that one is, and Abraham had, you know, a children, and him as good as dead. Not looking forward to the time when people say that about me. And Jesus then turns to his disciples, and it's the whole kind of result of a probable question, but he says to them, do not be afraid. And then he says that God's going to provide what they need and they not, need not to be circling around material things and earthly success. But I'm kind of that guy who when somebody says, you know, don't be afraid, but I get a little worried. <laughs> I wasn't afraid until you told me not to be. I get concerned. Anytime someone says that, it's a response to some serious worry and by my estimation, as far as biblical folks can see in their situation, there's not much in the way of help showing up for them. Abraham is getting older, as is Sarah, his wife, and the land grant and sufficient blessing that God promised, I'll give you land, descendants, and blessing, that's all good, but God, oh, wait a minute, we forgot the descendants, and back then, descendants were crucial. That was Social Security. Who was going to take care of you when you were old? It was insurance. Therefore, but that hasn't happened and Abraham is watching the clock and having more birthdays and starting to wonder if God is going to deliver. Jesus' disciples find themselves in the same boat. They follow Jesus, this promise of new life, this herald of the coming kingdom of God, but so far it's not very shiny or glitzy. The Romans have gotten only stronger and more ruthless. This Movement feels like maybe they need some funding, a second round of funding maybe, to see if they can keep it going, take over. That's their image. We're taking over. We're going to rout the others. What they want from God, from Jesus, is insurance against being human. They want a guarantee of divine compensation for loss, damage, or illness or God forbid, death. They are so human before us in these stories, it hurts, and if we can't see ourselves in the picture, we've missed the point, that's why we tell these stories, is to find out where we are. You know, when you look at a picture, big group picture of your family, what do you look for first? You, how do I look, where am I, where am I, what am I wearing, was I younger then, skinnier then, whatever. We look for ourselves. It's true. We just do. So the gospel is really that for us. We just put this picture up in front of ourselves and say, where are we? Yeah, I'm, I'm the guy who's trying to fill the purse in just in case something happens. I'm the guy, you know, I'm, I'm a Boy Scout. We're supposed to be prepared. I'm supposed to have good insurance. But somehow these folks have transferred their need for earthly satisfaction, for status, for wealth for protection, they've transferred that to God and decided that if I am successful, then God must be blessing me, which is a fundamental error of every experience with God. And St. Paul, who really gives us the meat of that lesson, and Susie read it so well, in the letter to the Hebrews, who are also worried a lot about not getting ahead because they're, they're immersed in a community that does not take them seriously, I think we should have read that lesson last. It's kind of the best part of today. I don't know. I don't want to start playing best parts of the Bible. But this one's a good one. And Paul says the greatest thing, one of the great things Paul ever says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. There's that little word, assurance. It sounds like insurance, doesn't it? 
but it's different. It's not something we can see. It's not something we can grab onto. It's not something we can control and rest for ourselves. He cuts through all that human geometry and our calculus about God's bank account on our behalf. It's like the stuff Abraham saw, but from the distance. He's saying, it's the assurance of that hope. It'll happen. It'll happen, and our biblical stories are all about how it happens. Jesus does come to usher in the kingdom and bring new life, but it's not like we think it's going to happen. So some of what we're doing in, war, in this world is adjusting our expectations. Assurance is a vision of the horizon a reinterpretation about what life's about, given the fact that we know where we're going. Where we all seem to go is to, to have stuff, to use stuff. And we're worried about losing stuff. And God says the stuff doesn't matter. As far as I know, insurance is based on actual formularies. I've been fighting with my insurance company lately. The odds of claiming more benefits are calculated so that the value of money we pay is greater than what we recover in the end. And I guess that's why it's a profitable business. And if we really think about it, it's just a sanitized and uh, interestingly named form of gambling. Someone else is gambling on us. That over time, my house will not fall down because I will take care of it, or a tree won't fall, or whatever. And odds are that it won't happen to enough houses that this pool of people ensure that they'll make some money. St. Paul just says, we need to change our understanding of what the house is, because the house seems to always win in gambling. We just need to understand who the house is. Promise came true for Abraham. He was the father of many nations. We're here because of it. Our faith stands on his shoulders. Jesus dies, but he rises to life again, and he tells us that where he goes, we're going to be as well. Drawn to this old Oxford story in Oxford that I heard that two theological scholars come on an old porter who's sort of the gate guy, who sort of opens the gates for people. And, uh, and, and he's sitting there at his break, eating his lunch, uh, reading the Bible. And they're chuckling because they're both biblical scholars, world famous. And they ask him what he's reading, and he tells them that he's reading the book of Revelation. And they all, they stare at each other and kind of have a little laugh because they know Revelation is certainly among the most perplexing texts of the Bible that people wrestle with. And if you take it literally, you will go crazy. I don't know how people do it. But it's perplexing even for them. And mind you, they say with this arrogant sort of classist tinge, uh, well, then what is that book about? And the man looks up and says, well, it means that God wins. It's hard to have faith in this world. There's a lot of fire and ice and water. A lot of humans getting in the way, pride, hypocrisy, vain glory, all the things. I go back to the seven deadly sins. I once had a class in seminary where the professor said, if you can create a new deadly sin that doesn't fit into the categories or a new heresy, you will get an A. <laughs> they're not new. They're old. They're old and standard. The desire to put our trust and faith in the stuff of this world and ourselves, our fight against anything letting go that God will do with us. We too are so human, it hurts. But Paul says, have faith anyway. Look at the arc of the biblical story. We're in it. We are the deep consolation of love in tough situations when we choose to be it and see it. We have the glory and intricacy of all creation to witness what, what we can only see partially but is whole and real. There may not be an insurance payout for all of our best efforts and certainly not 
for goodness and loving kindness. Sometimes it's quite the opposite. But that's not the promise. The hymn doesn't say, blessed insurance. It says, blessed assurance. We have faith in assurance, that blessed assurance that there is so much more for us in God, in following, watching, feeling, seeing, and living it more, as the prayer says, than we can ask or imagine. Don't be afraid. Or maybe be a little afraid. But if you are, understand why. Because we really want to take the reins and we would love to take over, but the fact of the matter is not in the Bible that we are insured against pain or worry. But we are assured of God's love, God's mercy, God's kindness, God's presence. In one way or another, the story. Enjoy your assurance today. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. We the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for Prayers of the people are Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, especially for the victims of war and violence in Ukraine. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop for Susan, Jennifer, our bishops, for the Reverend Canon Mark Stevenson, bishop-elect, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Wayne and Dottie Bibby, Norman Moore, John Kirchner, John Sandage, Jason Ewer, Carlos Gagliano, Kelvin Brindle, Daniel White, Bob and Susan, Sue Benning, Janet Crocker, Tom Duke, Harry Lankenau, Betty, Linda Mark, Marchman, Jackie Thompson, 
Nanette Alcaro, Jake Kirchner, Carol Collins, the Knights family, Natalie, Candace Sammons, Ruth and George Bryant, Brenda, Candace Moore, Betty Taylor, Rosemary Atkinson, Dan and Shirley Holler, Maggie, Henry Hopeman, Karen Mott, Doris Savage, Sarah Reynolds, and Joe Kopp. We pray for those in military service, especially for Austin, James Badgett, Thomas Garcia, Jake Hillary, Patrick Hillary, Isaiah Hurado, Samuel Jared LePage, Juan Manera, Catherine Manera, Austin Nicholson, Luke Scrooby, and Paul Stern Stoneburner. We pray for ushers, acolytes, Eucharistic ministers, and lay readers. For our mission partner, Legacy Eats. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Violet Hauser, Elizabeth Woodruff, and Carrie Brindle. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. God's peace. This is, this is the super spreader moment. It's good that it's funny compared to what it could have been. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Church today. Uh, I'm JT, John Thomas, the rector. Glad to have you. If you're visiting, uh, you will be welcomed, I promise, because this is kind of what we do. And also in our parish hall, there's a table. And if you're new, we have a special gift for you that gets you oriented and also is uh, one way we say we're glad you're here. So uh, we do have coffee hour after this. The amazing Bob and Barb Furman have been doing that. Um, we also have some beautiful flowers today that were done. Um, who did the flowers today? Margaret Raby. Margaret Raby did the flowers today. Thank you. I just lost that name for a moment. She's not even here to enjoy it, but that's all right. Uh, one note of caution was last week, uh, it's, it's possible that some people that were here got COVID from each other. It's just been a heavier week than normal in terms of the feedback to me. Uh, four folks said that they had gotten COVID. All of them fortunately are in good shape. Um, but 
Just be aware that when we come out and we gather, we're making that decision and we can mask and we can opt to stay away from each other. And, uh, you know, as, as somebody said early on in the pandemic, imagine that everybody is covered with glitter. <laughs> and as anybody who's ever had children knows, glitter never goes away. So it sort of feels like that the virus is that way. So let's just be circumspect and careful and, uh, and take care of one another. Uh, announcements, we have several. Jane has one she's dying to come up here and do. Come on. <laughs> Jane Siglo, our resident retired cleric. I'm not going to come up. Author and great preacher. <laughs> Go ahead. A lot of prologue here. Just a little prologue. But on Thursday of this week, just a few days ago, she defended her doctoral thesis and was declared the Reverend Dr. Kate Calvin. Hey. There we go. It's nice. Thank you. <laughs> Had the privilege of knowing Kate Kelderman when she was Kate Ingleby. We went to college at the same time. All that stays there. Uh, Jamie Bork, you have something to say? My gosh, it's just people coming out of the woodwork. So just wanted to give the, the weekly Shrinemont uh, uh, address. So uh, just so everyone know, we are full up. It's very exciting. So thank you all for, for coming and participating. And uh, if anyone has been a little delayed in, in getting uh, interest in, please let Chris or I know. We can always um, try to pull some magic with Freimont, and often we're successful. So if uh, anyone additional wants to come, uh, please let us know. But otherwise, we have a cohort that is ready and... Uh, That's exciting. Uh, I was, always want us to, to try to push that envelope to so grow to more spaces because the fact is it's a great way to get to know us. That's our parish retreat. Freimont's our parish retreat center about an hour and a half away from here. Beautiful place, down home cooking, the whole scene fun for the whole family, which is really fun for the whole family and not just for some of them. Um, and uh, we would love to make more space. So if you're still wanting to, let's push that envelope and 
Maybe it's a hostile takeover of another church's space. I don't know. Uh, um, God save us from the Christians. That's for sure. <laughs> In a loving way. Uh, we did pray for the, for the bishops of the Anglican Communion today, and our bishops in particular. They are at a once every 10 years conference at Lambeth Palace in Canterbury, England, which is a pretty good perk of being a bishop. You get to go hang out, and the queen comes for tea. Um, they're, they're sort of giddy, all churchy, you know. And, uh, but they have agreed on something major, and that is that God loves all of us, and really wants us to get along. Pretty deep, but important. Um, and that's, that's people coming from all over the world, so I'm, I'm teasing. They, they've done a lot more, but at the end of the day, they're not a deliberative body. They're, they're in that to be in relationship, which is such a strange thing for us in this world. People, you mean gather just to be together and pray? Sounds like church. There you go. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries? Sarah Baldwin. Wednesday, seven times seven. Seven times seven. <laughs> seven and seven. Seven and seven. All right. It's a very biblical number. Not seven times, but 77 times, which just means a lot. So congratulations. Sarah Baldwin. What day? Is it Wednesday? Good for you. There's a lot of good people born in August. My son? Friday, August 5th, Mark Finn is the ninth birthday. Nine years old, Finn. <laughs> the oldest of the Watson spawn. <laughs> Finn. Anybody else? Anniversaries? Nobody? It's too hot to get married this time of year, I guess. So the Lord be with you. Be Let us pray. Watch over these, your children, O Lord. As their days increase, bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall and in their hearts. May your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and our labor to God. More solid. <clears throat>
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Whoever us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. This is, not, this is the table, not of the church, but of Jesus Christ. It is made ready for those who love God and those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have not been here for a long time or ever before. You who have tried to follow and all of us who fail, come because God invites you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Finally, my friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of the God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.